Look at this. We've got we've got walls, and uh, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, Tracer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tracer, I'm sorry. Okay, guys, we're going to run through this game because this is one of the best games I've had in a while, and it shows you how swapping... You can just win more games of Overwatch. Read what the enemy are doing, use your brain, counter them, and destroy them. It's so easy when you do it, but I've just played this game, and I'm running it straight... In fact, I'm just going to pause. I've just played this game, and I'm running it straight back through the replay viewer. We're going to watch it from my perspective, and I'm just going to try and break down everything that I'm looking to do. Now, our tank combo here, we've got me on the Zarya, and we've got a, uh, a Sigma. So this... I mean, it's okay, it can work, but the enemy team have got Ball and they've got Tracer. This is going to be really difficult for me to get anything done with the Zarya because, I mean, their Sigma, if I can get to the Sigma, I can do damage to him. If I can get to the Ana, okay, maybe, but she's in a position where I'm not going to be able to get there. Tracer's going to be harassing our backline. Hanzo is going to just be spamming us from range. So basically, this is not a good comp to play the Zarya into because I'm not really going to be able to find much value. So watch what happens here because... You have to quickly identify this in Overwatch and be ready to change your hero. This is what the game is all about. So we find the Tracer to the left here, and we we try and push the Tracer. You'll notice as well, we're moving through the choke. We're not messing around. We're not standing in the choke. Don't do that. Get in. This is where it starts getting dodgy, because that ball is knocking us out of position. He's actually a pretty good player. As Sigma's out of position, we lose our Genji. It's not great. You can see I'm really struggling here to find a target. Now, I might have 50% charge there. Or I had even more. But I was doing damage to the Sigma, who was getting pocketed by both the supports. I can't do anything. Like, he's just going to laugh at me. And he's back to full alpha. I'm like, oh my god. We're backed into a corner. We're taking loads of damage. At this point, I'm just... It's just reactionary. Just trying to get a pick. Most of our team are dead. Maybe I can kill the Hanzo. We know it's all over. And then that's kind of it. Now, there's one thing you will notice here. I have my ultimate almost online. It's 63%. You know, I'm staying in the fight here. Maybe I can get a little kill on the Tracer. I've overstayed my welcome. And I'm going to die. Now, that's actually kind of bad play. I should have just pulled out there. I was in for way too long. But I'm what I'm trying to do is like everything I'm saying to you guys right now is what's happening in my brain as I'm playing in, in the game in the moment. Because like I said, I've just literally come out of this game. I can't play Zarya into this. There's no world where this will work. So I need to change. So I'm going to play ball. And the reason why I'm going to go for ball is I want to take... I want to take it to the enemy team. We're pushing quite quick. And I want to just get in there and be as disruptive as their ball is being. And Sigma ball... It's a pretty good combat, and Ball is just pretty good anyway right now. He's up there. I mean, Sigma's the best tank, and then probably Ball. So, there, Ball. Look at him. He's in super deep. I want to try and get him. I tried to slam him there, but I didn't quite pull off the there, which is kind of bad. But even this here, look at this. Straight back in. Being deceptive. The call has been made. Sigma is one. Let's take the Sigma out. We, oh, I think we get the Sigma. Oh, no, this. Okay, this. This as well. This is exactly what you've got to do in this. Look at my target priority here, right? I know I'm Ball, and he doesn't do much damage at this range. But our Sigma has got these two in the ultimate. It's pointless me doing the Sigma. Because look, he's super low anyway. He's going to die on impact. Kill the Mercy. Always kill the support, right? The support is super low. Managed to turn around and get the kill. Managed to push back from their ball. And everything is totally different. We've got the Tracer behind me. You notice I turned straight away. I, I can kill this Tracer. Like, ball on Tracer is super annoying. Get back onto the point, though. Get the kill. Kill the Hanzo. And then the, I noticed the Anna in the back line. I mean, Anna's done at this point. There's nothing she can really do. So everything that happens now, it, it's a benefit to us because we've won this point. So if they use any ultimates or whatever, we win. I don't think they do, but we take this point. Oh, actually, they do. There you go. My mistake. And I thought they did. That's why I started talking about it. Yeah, so Ball comes in. I don't know what he's trying to do. I mean, even if we pause this and just look over there, where's his team? I don't know what that Ball is doing. He was playing fairly well up until that, and that was just sort of like, I don't know. Don't do that. That's, that's throwing. That's actually bad because that Ball needs his ultimate to hold the next push, right? Because if we're going into a, uh, a minefield, you're not going to be able to get anything done. So, here comes the next phase of the attack. Now, this is 2CP, and this is Volskaya Industries. And, and let's be honest here. 2CP is difficult to attack into because you need that synergy. But look at our team. Look at what we're, we've got available. We've got a Genji Blade. We've got Batiste Window. We've almost got Mercy. Now, the call has been made here in this team to use Mercy and Genji Blade together. That's what we're going to try and do here. So, watch this. So this is the play. That's what we're going to... I'm waiting for our team to get into position. You can see our ball is... Uh, their ball even is harassing the... Uh, our Ash on the high ground. So I want to get in here. I'm going to use that tried and tested method. I want to try and get onto this guy. Now look at this. He... It's really unlucky here that I didn't kill him. He's super low. We've got a couple of kills though. I'm... Okay, I'm really worried. Really, really worried about that Anna putting me to sleep. That's why I disengaged from that really quick. I don't want any part of that. Again, she goes on with Blade though, I think, and kills her. But I was worried. Because if I get put to sleep, I can't use my ulti. You see what I mean, guys, about Overwatch? Let me just turn off that beep. That beep is so annoying. Go away, beep! Uh, beep, 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 beep. Where are you, beep? 
I've, I've gone blind. Capture sounds. Off. No, off. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So I was very cognizant of the fact my ultimate is almost available. Ball's ultimate on this point is super strong because they've got to walk into it and take loads of damage, right? We're fighting on the point. It's, it's in our advantage. I didn't want to get put to sleep on the high ground because if I'm asleep, I can't use my ult, right? And we need to use my ult to win. You guys know how 2CP works. We're investing every ultimate we've got here. We've got to use our ults to win this fight. So, it's looking good for us, isn't it? Although that could be famous last words because what's about to happen is you'll notice the enemy team, one of their DPS swaps to Doomfist. Massively good. Massively good for this. I mean, we're, it looks like we're winning, right? I'm actually getting a lot done here. Hop gets a great hook there, gets a kill on our Genji. Another kill from the Doomfist. Now it's time to disengage. I, it, it's bad. I, I'm kind of sad. I mean, it, that was really risky of me there to just go straight in because Hog could have hooked me and then I'm dead. But at that point, the fight's over. But look at our team. Great, great play. Everyone starts disengaging again. This is exactly what you need to do when you play Overwatch, right? And it, it sounds really sad to say this. It's not sad. I don't care. This ain't sad. I love this game. You know I do. I make loads of videos on it. But when it's like this, it's great. Like all, It's just so good. What I'm trying to do is just kind of go through my thought process in games because I don't really do this that often. Um, Overanalyzed is obviously great for looking at other gameplay, but I just want to almost give like a second-by-second second commentary on what I'm doing. And I don't think I can do this when I play the game live. But when I watch my replays back after just playing the games, I definitely can. So this could be something cool we can do. So we've got Sigma Zolt and we've got Petit Salt. Now, this isn't necessarily great, but what I'm going to do here is... I want to go in and I want to slam on them as they're getting picked up by Sigma Zolt. Or, or before they do. I think I, I don't time this just right, but I know this is where the enemy team is. So I'm just going to swing into them because I want to knock them off the point as well. So in we go. Bad swing. I mean, that was bad. Like, I shouldn't have hit the, the wall there. I think I probably got confused by Sigma's ultimate. Bomb. When, when you get bombed, stand still. But you notice what I did there as well. I'll take that back. What did I do there with the bomb? Again, this is just that moment to moment, second to second decision making, which comes from playing loads of Overwatch, where I've got, th there's a Batista immortality field in my face. I've been hit with pulse bomb, so I just sit in the immortality field. The other players would roll away from that. Don't do that. Read everything that's going on. Look, I've been stuck. Oh, it's fine. That would have killed me, I think. Or it would have put me super low. Come straight out. Come and get health. Want to re-engage again. I'm looking for low HP targets. Again, I'm looking to get my, my ult in play. But I didn't. Now, the reason why I didn't use my ultimate is we're clearly losing that fight. So watch this. We come back. Watch the kill feed. We're losing that fight. When you use your ultimate in a lost fight, you're giving so much advantage to the enemy team. It's mental. Don't do that. So watch this, right? Kill feed. I'm looking around. I'm thinking, do I do it? There's a lot of these guys on the point. Uh, they've used their ultimate. Do I want to use mine? No. And so I don't. It's a good decision because it means that in the next fight, we can use it. And look at our ultimates again. We've got Genji Blade. We've got the Mercy combo. We've got Mile. We've got Bob. And the call is made here is when the team get back together is to engage with Bob. Because when Bob's on the point, he's going to contest it. That's going to make the enemy team do something. And then we just go in. Ball's going to go in. Obviously, that's me. I'm going to drop the um, minefield and everybody's going to use all their ultimates. Genji's going to go in and wreck the back line. It's easy overwatches, right? When you think like this. Now... What was happening there with the replay viewer? One thing I've got to say is I know that every game won't be like this. And I know people will be like, Star, yeah, but look what your team are doing. They're working together. Didn't really work together there, did we? Look at that. I come straight out again. We've lost the player. I want to get straight out. That Doomfist comes in a bit over the top there. I mean, I've got to say this as well. That Doomfist swap is a swap for um, to contest the point, And then he's just stayed on the Doomfist. Sometimes that can work in your advantage because that Doomfist player might not be very good on Doomfist, but he was better on the other hero he was playing. I think he's playing the Hanzo. Um, but he's like, yo, I'm going to stay on Doomfist because I just got four kills and saved the point, which is fine. And Doomfist is good on this point. Um, but he went in too deep there. We got the kill. It just means let's go. We're a man up. Let's go. I'm straight in on the point, straight in with my minefield to block these guys off. The supports are literally one HP. I use my adaptive shields. I've got massive shielding. See the tracer's one HP. Let's kill the tracer. See, all of this just comes down to being aware of what's going on around you, right? And, and it's not hard, right? Look, just watch this from my perspective, yeah? We lost the player, so I come back out. Accidentally hit the tracer. I didn't mean to do that. Doomfist comes in. Straight on him. We get the res. So I'm just going to go in, drop my ulti, try and kill these supports, but I don't want to overstay my welcome. Notice that tracer blinks around the side. Oh, hello. She's one HP. I'm just going to rush her and kill her. Even if she wasn't one HP, ball is really good against tracer. And then now it's just a case of cleanup. And there's one thing you'll notice that I didn't do there, which you see a lot of, but I get really annoyed when I see this uh, from ball players. 
is they just swing around the middle of the false sky a point. It doesn't achieve anything. Like, do something. Try and take somebody out. Knock them off the point. Try and hit them with a slam. Try and kill them with your primary fire. Don't just swing around the point. Because all you're doing is minimal damage to people that walk into you. Yeah, you can test in the point. I mean, in fact, on defense, okay, sure. Do it on defense to keep it alive. But on attack, don't. It just doesn't really uh, result in anything. So, what the hell am I doing here? This is another swap. Now, if you guys have watched a lot of my overanalyze, you're probably thinking, Stai, why the hell are you changing heroes so often? You often say to us, just play one hero or maybe two. This is now my third tank in this game. Now, it's a good job we've got Sigma. Because, like, uh, Sigma is really good, guys, right? If you, if, if I didn't, if we didn't, like, if we had a Zarya now, I'd have to play the Sigma, yeah? If we had any other tank, I would have to play the Sigma. Because the Sigma is just, you play Sigma, guys, right? You need a Sigma on your team. Right then, what is the thinking behind this? Look at the enemy team comp. They've got a Tracer. They've got a Ball. They had these the entirety of the last match. This just comes down to reading what's going on. I want to kill the Tracer. I want to kill the Ball. So I'm going to play the Roadhog. And all I'm going to do here is kill the ball. That's literally what I'm going to do. Because I know ball can be a major problem for our team. The rest of my team, it's almost like I don't even care. Let them do whatever they got to do. So here, I'm setting up. Don't want to show my position. As soon as Tracer tries to come on the side, whatever, let's just kill her. It's an easy kill. Fine, whatever. This means we win this fight. That's just because I was keeping myself relatively well hidden. I didn't want to engage. I didn't want to show my hand. Went for a rando hook. Could have worked. You know, who never knows. Okay, this is the thing now. Ball. Ball, ball, ball. So I see ball coming in, and I don't know what that German means in the chat. Oh, whatever. But let's hide chat in case any nastiness comes through. Let's get rid of that. Oh, I got a shot caller. So ball is behind, right? Look at what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm just going to kill this ball. I want this ball to come near me. I'm going to hook him and make his life hell. But he's in the back line. I don't want to go too far away from the point. As you can see, I kind of come around here just to have a look. I'm like, where is this guy? Maybe I can go back to the front line. I know he's still behind us, but I can't. I didn't actually know he was right behind us and he does kill the widow i think so this is kind of not great play from me see i didn't realize he was behind i'm like oh my god so now i know where he is so i'm thinking uh oh we're, we're a player down we've got to try and do something i noticed that sigma is out of position so i burn my hook the problem with this though means that i can't deal with ball now so when ball wants to come in it's going to be hard for me to get any work done see if i had hook i could have got him bad play there i didn't manage to hook the um the hanzo and i die so even though I'm saying it was a big brain play to go for Roadhog. Look what happened. I actually fed my brains out. I didn't really... I got a good kill on the Tracer straight away. The ball I didn't deal with at all. It got into the back line and it took out our Widow. And then I tried to... Well, I hooked the Sigma. It, that pulled him out of position. May have helped a little bit. But then they came in and caused us some problems. Now, see the ball there. <laughs> so here's the decision, yeah? Let me just pause this. So there was a decision I could have made here. And a lot of you people are probably thinking, you know what? Stai, why didn't you go ball? Just to get back to the point. And I'd agree with all you people saying that. Because naturally I would. But the kill feed was indicating that it's actually kind of close. And I didn't want to give up the hog. Because the hog is still good against what the enemy team have got. Ball. Yeah, ball's fine. But hog can still shut this down. Remember, we're on defensive here. There's, there's not really anything I'm going to engage into. And our team doesn't really have any support for me anyway. I'd just be rolling into the enemy team on my own. And just hoping for the best kind of thing. And I don't want to do that. But notice here, the ball is trying to kill our Widow because it knows Widow's dead and Widow's going to come running back. And I'm like, no, I'm not having this. So I'm waiting around by our Widow. I don't know the ball is there, though. I'm thinking he's maybe around... I know he's in that area somewhere, but I don't want to run too far. But watch this. In fact, we're going to disconnect from here because this is really good from the enemy team. This is um, good comms. So I'm trying to protect the Widow, but I don't know Tracer's here. And Tracer is like, hey, hey, ball. Look what I found. So, yeah. Yeah, they both destroy it. Now, here's me trying to come in with the... You know, I've never actually seen inside Hammond like this. Let's have a look. <laughs> Hello, Hammond. Hammond. Hello. Is he smart? He's got his eyes open. Oh, what is that? Oh, God. Uh, Yeah. Anyway, let's get back on, on board with the old pork pie. So I tried to hook the ball. I do get him. But I'm not going to be able to get a kill here. So I need to get back to the point. And I am slightly worried here because I've got two of them on me. So I'm just dancing around trying to not take a load of damage. Get back onto the point. Bit of a reload. I don't know how I missed that hook. I really don't. That's bad. But look at what I'm doing. I'm in the face of the ball. This is exactly what I want to do. And I don't like this ball. And I want him gone. I'm taking a lot of damage. It's fine though. Because I know I can heal after this. It's going to be close. But I can heal. Again, missed the hook. Which is a little frustrating. But. Arguably. Even. Like this is. This actually. You know what this is? This is highlighting that. I'm playing. 
when it comes to me, a suboptimal hero. I'm not the best Roadhog, but I feel like I'm getting value just because of the sheer presence of the Hog, and it's causing problems for the enemy team. Because look at how I'm playing the Hog. I'm playing it to try and counter what the enemy is doing. Now, there's going to be things which happen in this game now. See, that ball comes in. A bit crazy. He needs to get out. Like, the enemy team are trickling in here. They need to get out. Look at the timer and watch what I do now. What can Tracer do here? Again, this is all Overwatch is about. Like, I tried to get this. I tried to communicate this across a lot in um, Overanalyzed, where it's like, guys, just, just think logically about the game. Like, what's going to happen? Well, there's 45 seconds to go. The enemy team, they either regroup and push or that one of their flankers will try and like, well, the only flanker because they don't have ball anymore, if you notice, will try and get onto the point to keep it alive or take control of the high ground. So where's the best place for me to be here? Well, it isn't with the team, is it? It's here trying to counter this. So I'm just chilling, trying to find it. I can't see it there. I've never seen a, a health uh, in the live game. I'm going to crouch now, I think. Yeah, because I don't know where she's going to come from, right? She could flash over there. Here she comes. Miss. That's fine, though. Because I still managed to kill her. She, I mean, she never rewind there. I don't know what was going on. Probably was just shocked that I was there waiting for her. Uh, and Sigma kind of pushes me. I was looking around for the Sigma. But it's all, it's all good. Sigma goes away. Stand on top of Widow while she gets rezzed again. Logical in case they've got a Widow or whatever. Or their Hanzo gets a shot. Now, look at this. We've got we've got walls. And uh, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, Tracer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tracer, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, Tracer actually wrote something in the chat after that. Which, uh, yeah. But you see what I mean, guys? Like, so that is just a standard game for me there. And it was playing, uh, I guess, in the off-tank role, you could say. Because we had a Sigma. Now, the thing to remember with tanks at the moment in Overwatch is you want to always have a Sigma. <laughs> and then the other tank, uh, double barrier is really, really good, right? D don't ever laugh at double barrier. You can take a Reinhardt. You can take a uh, an Arissa as well. It, it's always going to be super strong. That is, um, Zarya can work okay with the with the Sigma, but it depends what the enemy team are doing. Like the enemy team had a comp where it just meant I couldn't do anything to Zarya, so I swapped to the ball. I start playing disruptive. I start almost playing them at their own game. Start getting results. You obviously, hopefully, you can see the way I was managing my my ultimate as well. Uh, and then when you look at the final defensive phase, it was let's go the hog because I know they've got ball and I know they've got tracer because they played them all game. And if I can land some juicy hooks, I can make plays. And I did. You know, I killed the tracer quite a few times there. Probably dissuaded the ball from engaging a lot. And there you go. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this. Um, I am kind of getting in the urge of doing like this more. Can I even call this analytical content? But this more sort of breaking down the way the game's been played. Because, you know, you guys remember, I'm not, I mean, you know, I'm not some top 500 player. Um, but I just think that this kind of stuff will help quite a lot. Um, and it will definitely help you sort of get from, let's say, like gold, plat, diamond, masters into sort of high masters and above. Because this is the kind of thinking that when you get used to doing it, it just comes naturally and you just do it over and over again. But the, the moral of the story here is, guys, just try and be logical about what's going on in the game and just keep asking yourself questions like, where should I be now? What can I do against the enemy team? How should I position myself? What's the next play? What ultimate should we use? What ultimates do they have? That type of talk in your head, if you keep saying it to yourself, you'll start making really good decisions. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I've been Stylosa, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. Toodaloo.